And we've seen Donald Trump uh, recently join TikTok. He's trying to reach those young voters. Uh, it was a surprise move. He's had great success so far in reaching a new audience. Uh, let's have a look at his latest post. Here he is with uh, YouTube star Logan Paul. And where we... Yo, 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 I'm scared, yo. Is he taking note of what is happening in Europe and recognising younger voters have to be reached via these new platforms? It's, it can be quite difficult to get through through to them in the mainstream media. I'm sure he is. I mean, of course, Donald Trump's uh, extraordinary success in 2016 was in large part uh, um, the result of him using Twitter so well. Uh, of course, you know, the then pre-Elon Musk Twitter couldn't forgive itself for being used in this way um, and was obviously mortified. Uh, uh, but re remember how well he used Twitter all the ad money that his opponents uh, were were spending on the traditional networks, he didn't need to spend because everyone was writing about him and talking about him on the basis of any moment's tweet. Uh, his two uh, thumbs uh, saved millions and millions of dollars of, of ad campaign uh, spending. Uh, this time, it, it's, it's sort of inevitable he'll try other mediums and the TikTok will be one of them. Um, and we'll see if it works. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I, I, there's no reason why young Americans are going to have to vote Democrat any more than why uh, uh, young French voters are going to have to vote for the far left parties there. Uh, but, but you know, Trump is, of course, a, an extremely engaging performer. And he's a man who grew up in the media. You know, he was a television star before he was president. He's very, very aware and very canny about using media and social media. Uh, so it'll be very interesting. I suspect that his his rivals will do everything they can to cut off this way of accessing directly the public. Um, but there won't be very much they can do. Now, let's talk about the Hamas-Israeli war. The US-backed ceasefire proposal, the negotiations there are continuing. Uh, Hamas has sent back an unworkable counteroffer. Even the US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, acknowledges that uh, the war's going to go on with that unworkable counter from Hamas. They're refusing to agree to a plan that would include the release of hostages in exchange for a ceasefire. But it's worth noting, Douglas, that the Biden administration has the likes of National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, who has said some of the amendments proposed by Hamas are minor and anticipated. It's almost like he's <laughs> negotiating on their behalf. Uh, so much for not negotiating with terrorists. It seems the Biden administration has some who are negotiating on behalf of terrorists. Well, you know, I, I find this latest round of, of peace talks uh, to be an extraordinary uh, set of events. Uh, Israel is trying to get the remaining hostages back. It performed, or the IDF performed, special forces performed an extraordinarily impressive uh, uh, raid this past week in which they rescued uh, four, four of the poor Israelis who were stolen from the Nova Party on the 7th of October last year and have been tortured and uh, and more in captivity all the last eight months. Um, so the, 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 the Israelis want to find a way, of course, to get the hostages back. With the Americans and other interlocutors, they, they've got this plan, uh, and this plan would bring an end to the war. Now, who is the party that refuses to bring an end to the war? It's Hamas. And I wonder, Rita, whether all the morons protesting on the streets of Australia and America and everywhere else in the West uh, calling for ceasefire will register for even a moment that a ceasefire actually is on the table once again. And who is it that has rejected it? Hamas. And... You know, I, I wonder when he, whether any of these morons will notice this. I doubt it. But if, if the war is going to go on, everybody can say now with 100% certainty, as you could for the last eight months, the reason that there is no ceasefire is because of Hamas. 
Absolutely. Well, the, the, the morons, as you call them, marching in the streets in Australia, they never mention Hamas. Uh, it, it's always like Hamas don't exist. Uh, yep. And uh, you are going to be involved in a debate next week where you're, you will argue that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Tell me why you think that is the case, because there are many on the left in particular who argue that being anti-Israel, being anti-Zionist is not the same as being anti-Semitic. And they point often to the fact that there are prominent Jews who call themselves anti-Zionists. Yeah, um, I'm going to keep my powder dry for Toronto on Monday night. Uh, <laughs> but it's a... It's a uh, not it's giving a it away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving anything away. I, I mean, it's a topic that's incredibly important because um, just look at the way in which this word Zionist is now thrown around. I mean, the the mm. the disgust with which it's thrown around, uh, uh, the way in which this word uh, uh, that describes this noble and wonderful concept of Jewish statehood is being used as a slur. And, um, mm. you know, as I say, once again, and I've seen it myself, saw it recently in Australia, in Melbourne and Sydney, you had protesters screaming about Zionists. Zionists, do they know what they're talking about? I don't think so. Um, so uh, I do want to set the record straight on some of that. Uh, uh, I think that this is an extraordinary moment where uh, uh, there should be a moment of clarity in the West about this. And instead, I think that we're seeing an explosion of bigotry. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to getting into the weeds uh, in Toronto on Monday. So I, I think it's sold out, but anyone who wants to come to Roy Thompson Hall, perhaps they can uh, um, bribe their way to get a ticket, I don't know.